Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Bill. We're in the Tome and Blood today from 3rd edition D&D. We're looking at prestige classes. This prestige class video is going to be the True Necromancer, which I believe is the final prestige class video for this uh, book, because I do believe I've already done the Wayfarer's Guide. So, so this will be the last video in this book, and then I could pick up a different book and we can go through all those prestige classes as well. So this is a 10 level prestige class. And as I remember when I first read this prestige class over 10 years ago, it was not a great prestige class. But withholding those old judgments, let's take a good look at this prestige class. I will then go over what I would do to make it better for Pathfinder if you would wish to use this prestige class. So, without further ado, let's look at the requirements of the Prestige class. You need to be any non-good alignment, which makes sense. You have to have Knowledge Arcana and Knowledge Religion 8 ranks. In Pathfinder, I'd make that 5 ranks. Uh, the reason is, is uh, in 3rd edition D&D, you could have your level plus 3 and ranks in a skill at 1st level. So, hitting 8 ranks, you would have been 5th level. So... Spells, ability to cast divine spells, one of which must be animate, dead, and arcane spells, which must include spectral hand and vampiric touch. If I'm not mistaken, most of those are second level spells each. So you're going to have to be like sixth level or so. Must have access to the death domain, which you would only get on the cleric side. Once you start leveling into this prestige class, you would get two plus your intelligence modifier for skills. And the skills seem to be that similar to what a wizard would get. You don't gain any new weapon or armor proficiencies. Your hit dice is a D4. And then you gain, every level you gain in this class, Gives you plus one in your existing class for as far as calculating how many spells per day, what's the highest spell levels you can cast. But where you have two classes before you enter this, let's read into this and find out how that affects it. When a new true necromancer level is a gain, the character gains new spells per day as if she had also gained a level in the spellcasting class she belonged to before adding the prestige class. She does not, however, gain all the benefits of the character of that class would have gained. Meta magic or item creation feats, hit points, beyond what they receive from the prestige class, and so on. They don't gain the effective levels for purpose of rebuking. She does still gain the effective levels for purpose of rebuking undead and casting certain spells. If a character had more than one spellcasting class before becoming a true necromancer, they must decide to which class they add their new levels for purpose of determining spells per day. So those are the rules on that. Your base attack bonus is uh, like that of a rogue. It starts at plus zero, will end at plus five. Your best save is will save. It'll start at plus two at first level into this prestige class and end at a plus seven. And remember, these are added to your base class's bonuses. Treat it no different than if you were multi-classing, except there's no penalty for taking a prestige class. Um, fort and reflex saves start at plus zero and will end at plus threes for the prestige class. Now, at first level, you get rebuke and necromancer as your special abilities. At second level, you get zone of desecration. At third level, you don't get anything. At fourth level, you get create undead. At fifth level, you get major des desecration. At seventh level, you'll get create greater undead. And at tenth level, you'll get energy drain. So as you heard, there's a few levels where you don't get anything. Uh, rebuke. The true necromancer has great influence over living dead. Whenever they gain a level in this prestige class, they also gain an effective level for purpose of rebuking a dead. 
For instance, if a 5th level cleric slash 5th level wizard takes two levels of true necromancer, she rebukes undead as a 7th level cleric. And in 3rd edition, they didn't have the area channel that you would have in Pathfinder or Wanting. So, instead, you held up your holy symbol and you made a uh, charisma check uh, to see how influential your god is through you. And if you succeed, hit dice of undead would then be determined based on your roll on the table. And that's those would get a will save or begin fleeing from you and cowering. Now, if you were evil, they become under your control. And that's the rebuke part. Necromancer. The true necromancer has unsurpassed power over death. Uh, when she cast necromantic spells from the school of necromancy or the domain of death all her spell casting levels stack for purpose of determining their effect she does not gain access to higher level spells any faster than normal but the specified spells behave as though cast by someone of that higher level for example a fifth level cleric fifth level wizard second level true necromancer has added her two effective levels increasing Increases to her wizard class. If she casts an arcane noun necromancy spell, her caster level is 7th, while for a divine non-death spell, it is 5. However, if she casts a spell from the necromancy school or death domain, her effective caster level is 12th. Okay, zone of desecration. At 2nd level, the true necromancer begins to exert her authority over undead. As a supernatural ability, she is continuously surrounded by a 20-foot radius area of negative energy. The effect is otherwise identical to the Desecrate spell. Create Undead. On attaining 4th level, the true necromancer can create undead as a spell-like ability once per day. She must still supply the requisite uh, material components. This ability is considered a necromantic spell. So the character's uh, effective caster level is the total level of all her spellcasting classes. Major Desecration. At 5th level, the true necromancer extends her authority over undead. The supernatural area of negative energy surrounding her uh, now extends to a radius of 10 feet per caster level. Uh, create Greater Undead. On reaching 7th level, the true necromancer can create Greater Undead once per day as a spell-like ability. They must still supply the components. And it's considered a necromantic spell, gets all the level bonus. Energy Drain. At 10th level, the true necromancer acquires one of the most dreaded powers of the undead. Once per day, she uh, can use Energy Drain as a spell-like ability. This ability is considered Necromantic Spell, so the caster's effective level, caster level is the total of all the spellcasting classes. Well, first off, I would uh, give them better Create Undead. Not in the sense of spells, but in the sense of how many times per day they could do it. And the fact that you have to be two classes to get into this means you're 10th level before you even level into this. So by the time you're 20th level, you'll still have access on one of your class sides to um, like 8th level spells, I do believe. And then all this stuff... For going beyond 10th level to get all this stuff to begin with, it's it eats into how fun it would be play, to play it at a earlier, even, a lower level. If I was to create a true necromancer myself, I'd just play an evil cleric, in all seriousness. Maybe ask for one or two items that would benefit me, or maybe look through some archetypes, see how that would do for Pathfinder. But if you wanted to play this prestige class, uh, the first thing I would do is I would increase the uses of uh, Create Undead. 
I'd probably negate the material component cost um, for you. And then I'd probably throw in a bonus feed every time there is something under special that wasn't listed for the class. So at third level, there's nothing at sixth level and at eighth and ninth level, I'd probably give you a bonus feat. And that bonus feat has to be taken either out of the arcane or, or divine uh, item crafting or meta magic feats. And that's what I would do. So this is the true necromancer. Let me know what you think of it. Until we all game again, guys.